Hello, my name is Jimmy Vegas and welcome to this, the 13th and final episode in a series of how to make a mobile game in Unity 5. So this episode we're going to cover a couple of things. We're going to look at our final settings that we've put in place for this game. Uh, we're going to look at touch controls and we're going to look at actually building the project itself for testing and for publishing. So firstly, what we're going to need to do is let's set in a couple of our settings. So if you go to edit, project settings, and let's go to player. Firstly, let's set our company name. So you can set whatever your company name is or your actual name, whatever you want. So JB Game Studios. Product name would be the game's title. So I'm going to call this just mobile tutorial. So if yours is um, called, like mine is keep flying, then you would put that there. Uh, I'm not going to bother with default cursor, there's no point in changing that. Default icon, so you can have um, whatever icon you want, you can put a texture in there if you wanted. Like that, if you really, really wanted to. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in this image. It's just something quick, it, it's the uh, thumbnail I make for all these videos, so I could use that if I wanted to. So put that on there, that's fine. Uh, down here we've got a couple of options that we don't really need to worry about. If you click on the uh, Android option just there, you also have uh, iPhone, iOS settings. So if you're making it for both, you would have to change um, in both of these. But since we don't really need to change anything here, we don't need to worry about it too much. Now, this game itself, what we're going to do is we're going to build it in... Um, Windows first to test before we build it into Android or iOS. So I'm going to go on splash image and drag and drop this image there. So the config dialog banner is, um, well you'll see it in this tutorial, when we build the game itself you are presented with a config dialog of settings, i.e. you want it looking good, um, change your keys around or whatever, your image there will be shown. So what we'll do is let's go to File, Build Settings, and if you remember, when we first started this tutorial series, we automatically changed it to Android. I gave you the option of changing to iOS or whatever. I'm going to go to PC, Mac, and Linux, and now I'm going to switch platform. Now what this does is it kind of re-imports everything. It shouldn't take too long with a project of this size, but essentially it's a way of porting a game to different platforms. So if you've missed this step out at the beginning of this series, don't worry about it for now. You can see everything has changed and that looks fine. So I am going to go to build and run just there to build it for PC. Hopefully this won't take too long. I'm just going to call it test.exe, which is fine. So it'll bring this up and it'll take in this size of project, it will take just a few minutes to build everything together. It really shouldn't take too long. Usually games of this size can be built pretty quickly in Unity. When you start getting larger and larger and larger games with more and more assets, more and more scenes, more and more scripts, everything, that's when they can start taking a little bit of time to compile themselves together. So one thing to note as this is building, um, there is a slight tweak you will have to make if you're building between PC and mobile, but we'll get to that in our scripts in just a minute. So if you intend to publish this for multiple platforms, just be aware of the changes that we'll have to make specifically in our scoring um, script. So this is almost done now, as we can see. Uh, it's on the post-processing player, which means it's building the player together that we will use. So now we have the ability to test this game in PC. And as you can see, it quickly wants to check it out to say there may be something bad, which obviously there isn't because we've built this ourselves. So if you get anything like that, don't worry about it. Just let it do its thing. It shouldn't find any problems whatsoever. OK, so as you can see, like I said, this is our splash screen right there for our config. So you have the option to change your config here, and I'm just going to put it at 800 by 600 just for now, and windowed, and I'm just going to play. So we can see here, this is how we can quite easily test our game. So let's play. 
no problem. Main menu, okay, and quick game. As you can see, I did tell you uh, when we built that quick game it would work. That's where the quick game button will work. Okay, so we've built it for PC. We've tested it, it's fine. Now we want to build it for mobile devices. So we need to head back into our scripts and we need to change um, a couple of scripts. So we need to go into our score save script for starters. And we have to use something called player prefs. Whereas the file and system we've used previously saves it to a file on our machine, we'll need to cancel out um, these particular lines of code here and just use player prefs. So we can get rid of this one. So you can use a double slash to blank it out. And instead of those three lines of code, we put player prefs dot set int in brackets. Let's put high score. So if you remember, that's the name of our file that we used previously up here, file name. We've got high score. So I'm just using a similar sort of naming convention there. And then what we want to set into that file of player prefs is going to be our score amount. Semicolon and save. So that one's fine. So now we need to change the score load. So let's open our score load script. And where we need to change it is going to be, um, let me see, so what have we got here? So we need to get rid of that line. We can get rid of this one. In fact, we can get rid of all of these here, I do think. We don't need them. Um, yep, that's fine. So on the last line, what I'm going to put here is, um, let's see how we're going to do this. So we've got our high score display. In fact, I'll put it above the high score display. So our score load, which is our string, is going to be um, score load equals player preps um, dot get int. Make sure we put it in the same, so it's high score, and then close quote, so, um, close bracket, and semicolon and save. So at this point, our game is now converted, ready for, um, oh, what have we got here? Can I convert string uh, into string? Okay, that would be get string. Okay, hopefully that should work. Let's clear that. Okay, there we go. So now we can display our score that way. So, as I say, we've converted it now, we've um, ported it, I should say, to Android. So let's change our settings back to Android or iOS or whatever you want. So switch platform. Now, at this point, the final thing we're going to need to do is put in a button which we can tap on our screen, which will allow us to um, emulate the jump button that we use for the PC. So we need to quickly import um, cross-platform input. So as soon as this is done, um, we're going to import. And if you don't have this option to import, um, head over to the Unity 3D website and you can download it there. So once that's done, let's close that back into Unity to our assets window, right click, um, import package, and we want cross-platform import. As I say, if you don't have that, head to the Unity, sorry, Unity 3D website and you can download the standard assets there for free and this will be included. So we need to import that. Take just a second to import it, shouldn't take too long. All this is is just bringing in a couple of things which are useful for you when you're building mobile games. It really is useful because with Unity that they tend to put stuff in there which is easy for you to use and is free at no extra cost. And it's just a case of dragging and dropping and go and run with it and it's fine. So once it's all imported, head to your standard assets, cross-platform input. Once it's had a think, cross-platform input, prefabs, 
Um, and I think it should be this. No, not this one. Cross-platform input prefabs. Um, let me see which one is it. There we are, dual touch controls, my apologies. So we can drag and drop that into the hierarchy. So if we double click that, you can see it gives you a couple of options there. Uh, for move touch area, turn, look touch area and jump. So we need to sort this out. We need to get rid of that one. Yes, continue. Need to get rid of that one. And then we need to make jump the size of the screen. Because we want to be able to jump wherever we touch on the screen. Uh, to get rid of the text box because we don't actually need that. And then let's change this jump to be completely see-through. So click on the color and then change the alpha all the way to zero. So what this effectively means now is our entire screen, if we touch it, we will be able to jump. Now, obviously I can't show you this actually working because you, you would need a touch um, device for this to work. So if you're using Unity on a powerful tablet or something similar, then you'll be able to test it at this point. So, now we have pretty much everything built, everything good to go. Our level is going infinitely. We have our touch controls ready to jump at any given point. We've tested on PC. We've got all our settings in. So you would go to file, build settings, and I not, don't think I'll be able to show you any further than this, but if you click on build and run, or just build, you'll be able to save the APK, in this case for Android. So let's do... Um, mobile game and save so now you would build it connect your device and you would test so at this point now this is as far as i can show you how to build a mobile game it is now up to you guys to take everything you've learned piece it together differently put it together however you want embrace everything i've taught you change scripts around Build it, test it, and then you stick it out there. You make money from it. You do what you want with it. It's your game. You're the one that's built it. So I'm just going to cancel that now because I, it, it will come up in error anyway because obviously I can't run um, an Android game on a Windows PC. But yes, that is how you build a mobile game in Unity 5. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching all of these episodes so far. Check out my other tutorials. There's loads more things to learn. There's loads more great things coming up throughout the years because we'll be doing this for a long time. Um, if you guys want to learn a couple of things in C Sharp as well rather than JavaScript, um, I do have C Sharp tutorials that you can learn. And yeah, there's loads more you can learn. So once again, thank you very much for watching and I hope you guys managed to learn something good.